Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be doing my 2023 reading year wrap up. But before we go ahead and get on into the stats, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new content. I post new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, please give this video a like, throw a little support my way. I really appreciate it. So for 2023, I ended up reading 42 books. My goal was 50. And I'm a little bit bummed that I wasn't quite able to reach that goal, but I still feel like 42 is good. But I'm going to go through the breakdown of the different genres I read of those 42 books. So of the 42 books, nine were adult sci-fi. I read four romance, nine adult fantasy, one young adult sci-fi dystopian, three fantasy romance, four nonfiction, nine YA fantasy, and then three thrillers. So I normally read mostly adult fantasy, so I'm super excited that I was able to read the same exact adult sci-fi as I was adult fantasy, because sci-fi is a genre that I want to delve more into. And I'm glad that I was able to read more young adult fantasy as well, because I put that on the back burner for a little while, and I own so much of it, so I'm glad that I started getting through some of my physical TBR. And then I'm really pleased that I read four nonfiction, which means that I read one nonfiction book, you know, on average per quarter. And I think that's a good goal. I might carry that goal into 2024, just reading one book, you know, every season, because I feel like that's manageable. I tend to struggle with nonfiction. Next, I want to delve into the different series that I finished this year, because I do tend to start a lot of series and then struggle to finish them in a timely manner. And I actually ended up finishing six series this year, which I'm super, you know, proud of because I didn't think it was that many. So the first series that I finished, and I do own this book, it's downstairs, I forgot to bring it up with me, is The Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. I read Queen of Air and Darkness. The next series I finished was The Covenant of Steel by Anthony Ryan. I read The Traitor. If I have a review for any of the books that I talk about, I will go ahead and link it up in the cards. But this is an adult fantasy series, one of my favorite low magic, high um, like military type stories. So definitely check out this series if you haven't already. Next, I finished The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. I read The Fall of Babel. And I do have reviews for, I think, the first three books of this series. This is definitely a different type of adult fantasy. It has some steampunk sci-fi elements, so it's like a sci-fi fantasy. Then I finished the Levelers trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. This is the spin-off series from his first Law trilogy. And each story in the trilogy follows its own like individual plot but we do get a lot of crossover from the different characters from not only the first law world, but also characters we're introduced to in The Heroes and Best Serve Cold. Then I finished the Silo Trilogy by Hugh Howey. I both started and finished this series in 2023. This is an adult sci-fi post-apocalyptic dystopian type story. I do have reviews for all of these books and I wanted to read the series because Apple put out the TV show earlier this year and already went through season one. Definitely looking forward to season two and I just wanted to have the books read before the continuation of this of the TV show. And lastly I finished the Winners Trilogy by Marie Rakotsky. This is a YA fantasy and I forgot how much I loved Marie Rakotsky's writing. She develops a very simple fantasy world and focuses most, mostly on characterization, but she is able to communicate just heart-wrenching emotion so much in her writing, and I absolutely adored the series. So I finished six series, and I ended up starting seven new series. So I'll go through the series that I started, and then I'll let you guys know if I plan on continuing with that series based on how I felt about the first book. So the first one is Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. This is an adult sci-fi. I just finished this book not that long ago. I have a full review for it. I was pleasantly surprised um, with how much I ended up liking this book. And I've already purchased the second book, Antimatter Blues, and I'm really excited to read it in 2024. Then we have the Transformation Trilogy by Cassie Alexander. This is a self-published dark beauty and the beast romance retelling. 
and I read the first book, really enjoyed it, so I bought the second book, and yeah, definitely a different take on the original fairy tale, original story as we know it. Then we have Foolish Kingdoms by Natalia Jaster. This is another self-published uh, romance type story. I did enjoy it. I felt like it was a bit long-winded at certain points, but I enjoyed it enough to purchase the second book, and we'll continue it at some point. Then we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is a YA fantasy. And I was pleasantly surprised once again with how much I enjoyed this book and I've already purchased the sequel, Fox Love. And then I found out recently that there's going to be a third book in this series, so super pumped for that. Then we have the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. This is an adult sci-fi series. It was one of the first books that I read in 2023 and I do have a full review for it. This is a super popular book on booktube and definitely I fell into the unpopular opinion with this. I just did not enjoy it enough to continue with the series. Then we have the London Steampunk series by Beck McMaster. This is a fantasy romance and with steampunk elements. And I found out that the subsequent books like don't follow the exact same plot as in this book. Um, they're kind of like companion novels and I'm still undecided if I want to continue or not. I really did enjoy this but I have a decent amount of fantasy romance that I would rather read first before investing in this series but I probably will pick it up at some point. Next we have Silver and the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. This is a YA fantasy King Arthur type retelling and it was actually my first Alexandra Bracken book. She's a very popular author, just never read anything by her. And I did like things about the story. I thought it was fun. I thought it was an interesting spin on what we know about King Arthur, but unfortunately I just didn't enjoy it enough to want to continue the series. And then we have Snow Globe by Soyoung Park. I believe this is going to be a series. While the main conflict was addressed and resolved in this book, it looks like there's going to be additional books. I have no intention of reading it. I thought this book was okay, it wasn't horrible, but it definitely wasn't the best sci-fi dystopian I've ever read, and I really have no desire to continue. Next are series that I'm currently in the middle of, so I continued my read of them, I just didn't finish them. And there are only four, which is a little bit embarrassing because I am in the middle of quite a few series and I definitely could have done better with focusing on finishing these. So the first one is The Faithful and the Fallen Quartet by John Gwynn. I read Valor. I fully intended to finish this series by the end of the year, but I've just hit different reading slumps throughout 2023 and unfortunately this series kind of fell into that lull. Then I continued with the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey, and if I remember correctly, I think I read three of these. I think I read Nemesis Games, um, I know I read Sibylla Byrne, and I'm pretty sure I read Abaddon's Gate. So I think I read all three of these in 2023, and I said on my 2024 uh, like reading goals and plans video that I did want to finish this series. So that has already been established. I will do that. So I'm glad that I got through three of these big books in 2023. Then I continued with the Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber, which is a Caraval spinoff series. And I do have the third book in this series, and it is on my January TBR if you guys watched my January TBR. This is just such a fun, whimsical YA series that it's just nice to delve back into this world. Then I continued with the Sisters of the Salt series by Erin A. Craig. I read House of Root and Ruin. So once again, this falls into kind of like the companion novel type series. You do not have to have read, in my opinion, House of Salt and Sorrow in order to understand this book. It's a story in its entirety. Um, but they are related, obviously the same characters, and in this book, um, things from the first book are referenced, but it's not like a continuation of one plot from the first book. And then I continued with the Transformation Trilogy by Cassie Alexander by reading Break Her, the second book. As for the three books that I DNF'd, I am so surprised that I only had three DNF's for the year. Some years I have like five to ten. So I'll tell you why I DNF'd them. The first one was Craven Manor by Darcy Coates. I've been wanting to read Darcy Coates for a long time because her books just look like they are pure creepy reads. She writes horror thriller. And I started reading this and the writing was just, like the writing wasn't bad, but it was almost like she was trying too hard to establish a, an atmosphere 
that fell into like these parameters of what a haunted house story should be. And it just felt very unoriginal and almost like cookie cutter. And I really found the main character to be kind of more childlike than adult-like. And it was supposed to be a, a grown man. And I just didn't connect with it, which is disappointing. So I DNF'd it and I won't pick up any more of her books. The next one is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I got 100 pages through this. I tried physically reading it and I tried the audiobook and neither one worked for me, which was really surprising because The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires was one of my favorite books, I think, of 2022. And I was surprised with how much I liked it. But this one, like, just nothing about this book spoke to me. It's about a whole bunch of girls who survived, like, a, a murder attempt. And they all are involved in the support group to discuss their experiences. All of the characters were horrible, even the main character. And then, I don't know, the plot just never developed. I couldn't tell where the plot was going. I do want to continue reading Grady Hendrix. This one just did not work for me. And lastly is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I, same thing, physically read this. I got it from the library. And I tried the audiobook. I got 100 pages in and I DNF'd it. I... I understand that this book is really, really hyped, and I just don't understand why. Like, the, the characters are insufferable. This is supposed to be an adult book, and they act like immature, juvenile teenagers. I, I don't understand why this book is so popular. I mean, I guess if you go into it knowing that, then you'll enjoy it, but I was expecting just better writing, better characterization. And it, I just didn't get it. So I definitely won't be continuing with the series. And I probably won't read any more by Rebecca Yaros. She just did not work for me. Okay, you guys, that is it for my 2023 reading year wrap up. Definitely let me know in the comments how many books you read, maybe some of your favorites, or maybe even books that you didn't like so much. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all in another video soon. Goodbye.